This is the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My special guest today is two talented singer-songwriters from a band called Duende. I hope I got that right, fellas. Perfect. All right. Killed it. I have uh, Jay Aaron and also Edward. Uh, Welcome to the Bring Back Soul Music uh, Podcast, fellas. Hey, thank you so much for having us. Thank you for having us. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Welcome again. Um, I got sent some information from your from your team mm. and you guys have a new single that's out that I just love by the way called dangerous. Thank you. Thank um, you. Thank and you. actually we just posted that on our website, uh, bring back music.com on the seventh, which was yesterday at the mm-hmm. time of recording. Um, well, we're going to get into that a little bit later. Uh, also you have an upcoming album that scheduled to come out in 2021, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Early 2021. Uh, really looking forward to having people here, really. Okay, so we're going to get into that, too. Uh, mm-hmm. But before we do, um, I'd like to get to know both of you. Tell tell me about, and then we'll get into the band as well, but mm-hmm. tell me about um, about Jay Aaron. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, I, uh, first of all, thank you so much for having us. I really, I really appreciate you taking the time and chatting it up, chatting it up with us. Um, yeah, man, a little about bit about me. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm a pretty simple guy. I grew up in Jersey, born and bred, still live in Jersey. Um, uh, I, I get a lot of flack for it, but uh, <laughs> that's that's all right with me. Um, Jersey's home. Jersey's home. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, man, I, I, I kind of grew up doing music my whole life. If it wasn't music, it was theater. If it wasn't theater, it was like some form of entertainment on, on some sort. So um it was only kind of like it was a supernatural, easy transition for me into kind of this band and what we do, um, which is acapella, like um, completely all vocal music, no instruments whatsoever. Um, we still get a lot of questions about, hey, are you sure there isn't like, you sure there isn't some real instruments or a drum snare in there or anything like that? Um, but it's uh, something I've loved doing for a really, really long time. And yeah, it's my passion, music, man. I, I always tell people, I don't know what else I'd. I don't know if I have a skill set for anything else <laughs> at this point. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm just happy and thrilled to be able to make a living doing music. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Edward. Uh, yep. Yeah, so um, I'm, I'm also a Jersey born kid. Um, mm-hmm. Grew up also on the West coast, lived in California for, for a few years and then um, spent a lot of time growing up in Long Island and uh, grew up on a steady diet of um, Michael Jackson um, Run DMC, um, and uh, and and then through Run DMC started finding um, uh, classic rock because of their records. You know, um, discovered Aerosmith, uh, then started discovering ACDC and Led Zeppelin and all these other rock bands. Um, and uh, studied from a musical standpoint. I studied classical music. I studied uh, classical piano, classical uh, clarinet. But that was just sort of a training thing. And then on my own, I was always making my own records with friends. Um, and then in college, found uh, college a cappella, like Aaron did as well. All of the mm-hmm. group members that are in the in the band now, we all um, studied or got that bug bitten by the uh, we were bitten by the a cappella bug in college, um, <laughs> and then uh, uh, came to New York after graduating college and then started this group, and it's it's uh, it succeeded beyond uh, whatever whatever I thought was going to happen from it, and uh, and here we are today. Okay, um, I guess this is a good time to maybe introduce the uh, rest of the members of the band. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so there's six of us total. Um, Ed and myself, we are two of the members. Um, I, I do um, some backgrounds and a lot of the lead vocals as well. Mm-hmm. Ed? I do the uh, vocal percussion, um, kind of the beatboxing stuff. 
we have uh, a member named David Lane who sings the bass. Um, a All the way from tenor. Canada. Yeah, in, in Toronto, Canada. Um, a tenor named Tomas Cruz, um, who's also a great arranger. Um, a soprano, Abby Janes, who does actually all of our arranging. Um, and um, our other tenor, Derek Hicks, um, who also um, does backgrounds and a lot of lead singing as well. Okay, did you, I, I, I thought I heard you say, did you guys all meet in college or how did you guys all get together? <laughs> not, not all six of us. I went to college with our soprano. Um, Aaron and Derek went to college together. And then David and Tomas went to college together. And then we sort of found each other through, um, uh, I guess, word of mouth. Um, Aaron, so I guess Aaron was the one that came to us via, actually you came to us via word of mouth as well. You know, yeah, yeah, our, our yeah. Friend. And then Aaron brought in um, Derek after a period of maybe six months. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there we, we found David and then David went to college with Tomas. And so, you know, we each had someone that we, we sang with in college, one other member that we sang with in college. Okay. Um... Yeah, I think you guys have an uh, interesting story. Um, now, you guys said you guys do a cappella. Um, yeah. Was that um, was that the thinking from the outset to do a cappella? Because you don't see too many a cappella groups anymore. Yeah, I think Take Six yeah. is the last one I remember. But yeah, Take Six was a big inspiration. Um, mm. And um, but we, I knew I was never going to be in a. I was never gonna be able to perform or do music like Take Six. They're too good. <laughs> they they <laughs> and, are you know, fantastic. They're, yeah, they're too skilled, and they were, just, you know, there's there no way to even try. And I'm, we actually, some of the early versions of this group, we tried. We looked at some of their charts and tried to sing it and tried to mimic it the best that we could. And we're like, oh, this is way too difficult. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, their records left an enormous impression on us. Um, and um, but coming out of college. Um, yeah, the, the groups tend to come and go fairly quick. Um, there's a lot of enthusiasm when you come out of college. If you've sung college a cappella, you don't necessarily want to let it go. But college a cappella is sort of its own beast. There's a very specific style that comes with it. Um, and the groups tend to be quite large. Um, the group that I was in at one point was, I think, 18 members was the most that we ever had mm -hmm. at one point. And that's that's a large group to to try to do um, like nuanced and subtle stuff, you know, because oftentimes you have like two or three people singing the same line um, and then you get a lot of volume with that. Or if you have like really complex arrangements, there's just a lot of movement going on. Um, so uh, when I when I graduated, I knew I wanted to be in a much smaller ensemble. And there were a couple of groups that had been out on the circuit, um, professional groups that were really, really good, doing really, really great work. Um, and that had inspired me to try to try to do the same thing. Um, but, you know, a lot of the groups that I started out with, they, they don't exist anymore. Some of my, my colleagues and some of them have still managed to continue and do really good work. But it's it's an ebb and flow like like any other industry. You know, things come and go quickly. And we've been around long enough that um, we've seen great groups come and go and and have been around to kind of witness like the next wave of really good groups coming up as well. OK. Um, yeah, you said 18 members. Um, that's a choir. In college, yeah, in college. <laughs> yeah, right. That's what, exactly what that is. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a choir, yeah. Okay. Um, you just mentioned that um, Take Six, <clears throat> excuse me, Take Six was an inspiration. Mm -hmm. um, but explain, because I have to admit, when I heard your song, I thought there were instruments. So <laughs> sure. um, explain your style um to us but for those who have never <clears throat> heard your music for example mm. how would you explain what you guys do man um i would i would probably explain it as well the first thing you got to know about all of us all six of us we come from a super solid solid like um foundation i'll call it of like r&b funk and soul music so you name it we've between the six of us we've heard all of it and we kind of love of it love all of it so um but our bread and butter like the six of us unilaterally are all about like michael jackson prince shaka khan stevie, stevie wonder. wonder you know um like the big heavy hitter legends uh so we we have a, a nice healthy diet of, of that music together and i think yeah. what we try to do is um 
uh, is kind of make that come across in our music. We, we started doing covers for, uh, we've been doing covers for a really long time. And this mm-hmm. is one of our, it's our first full length original project. Um, but we, what we really wanted to do is like inject as much as that fla- of that flavor in there as much as possible um, while getting to know us a little bit better as well. So, um, and that was even like behind writing Dangerous. It was like, you know, there's, it's kind of like I, I wanted to write something that kind of opened the room a little bit and just kind of like a nice introduction to uh, who we are at, and our flavor a little bit. Um, and we also wanted it to be a little bit, um, you know, we wanted to be like grown and sexy too, you know, like, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Acapella music does a lot of, you know, there's a lot of things out there and a lot of people are doing a lot of different things, but um, we really, really wanted to try to make something kind of like, Almost like, you know, like speakeasy after party vibe, you know, grown folks sit down, have a glass of whiskey, you know, talk, talk about grown folk things. So um, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's the influence behind uh, the music that we're making now and that, you, that uh, we'll release in the future as well. Okay. Well, I definitely think it works. Um, for those who haven't heard Dangerous, please go check it out. Um, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so take me through this particular song. Um, How long did it take you guys to put it together? And well, let me ask you, when you guys collaborate on music, um, do you all have to agree or you guys just go with the best idea? How does that? Oh, that's such a good question. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) We try to, we try to, um, so we're, yeah, we're basically a democracy. uh, And, um, we we really want to do things that all six of us can agree on and as you can imagine that that's harder that's harder to do than than not um and so it it you know the, it comes in a variety of different ways and, and but most of the, the most important thing is that um after having been together for as many years as we've been together we sort of understand each other's tastes we've sort of all kind of uh, moved into, moved on to the same page. Um, and we can kind of anticipate when something's good. So f- this is a long winded answer, but, um, for Aaron and I, we know that like, if he likes something and I like something, chances are that everybody's going to like it. Mm-hmm. And we tend to come at, we have like, you know, different views of the same, like we come at it from opposite ends of the yeah. spectrum, I guess. And our tastes are different but we still have a love of the same type of stuff. Um, and so uh, this album, when we started to come up w- with um, the idea of even doing it, because we had started doing original our covers, I should say, a long time ago, right? Our first Michael Jackson cover dropped mm-hmm. um, almost 10 years ago to the day um, in October of 2010. And we started to gain, gain a lot of traction off of doing that. And we had all six of us had a mu- mutual love of Michael Jackson's music and um so when aaron and i sat down to talk about maybe doing an original record we knew that we were going to have to um spend a lot of time in the kitchen just cooking up some stuff and um uh, (laughs) and that's kind of how it started but knowing that we we weren't going to be able to do it unless all six of us agreed to it because it was going to be a long-term commitment and there was going to be a lot of effort um on everyone's part to make it happen so um yeah, I mean, Aaron, you can speak on the actual writing of the song and how it, how it came to be, um, that this is the first single that we released. Yeah, um, this was, uh, I think, you know, you know um, like I, I imagine when most people are writing music or writing an album even, you know, you write a bunch of different songs, you get a bunch of different ideas. And then, um, you know, some are great, some are not so great, some that are, people are gonna hear and love, others people will never hear and they will never see the light of day. Um, and once we kind of figure out like the the cornerstones kind of what we wanted for our album then we kind of went to a place where where it's like okay so like what what do we want to come across so we wanted like something to open the room to kind of like get you um a little bit familiar a nice like um an appetizer if you will we've all eaten we know what food is appetizer um it's so and yeah it was just really like embracing kind of the identity that we wanted to Kind of craft for ourselves and showcase a little bit more for ourselves. We, uh, like Ed said, we we we've done a lot of covers, specifically Michael Jackson, and that's the thing that took us around the world. 
um, our YouTube videos. Um, you know, we, we, we did better than, <laughs> I mean, I'll speak for myself. We did better than I, th I thought we would, <laughs> you know, like in terms of views and, yeah, and, actually, uh, the, the MJ project that we did was supposed to be just kind of a one-off. We were supposed yeah. to do like five or six videos and then move on to doing an original album right after that to just kind of illustrate that, hey, like our original music that we're writing, it's kind of like it's an homage to some of the, the stuff that we grew up listening to and really admiring. Mm -hmm. uh, we just never got to it because things started to happen and we started to get all these off opportunities and these offers. And so we went with it and we went with it for a lot longer than we initially thought we would. And so by the time we had to, we, by the time we got to making this original record, we really had to pump the brakes on everything and just get to a point where everything just kind of slowed down yeah. so that we'd give ourselves <laughs> an opportunity to just kind of clear the calendar and say, oh, okay, this is what we're going to do, which um, was hard. It was hard to actually get to that point where, you know, we're going to stop and we're going to, you know, make sure that we spend month after month after month getting into the studio and writing. And then we wrote a bunch of songs. We wrote like an entire EP <laughs> <laughs> that we wrote and we were like we were we were jazzed about it and then we played it for their for the other bandmates and there's that moment where you click play and you know you're you're now this thing that you worked on with just two people maybe you're, more people are going to hear it and you know before they even hear it whether or not it's worth it and you click it and there's that moment there's that pit in your stomach you go this is not this yep. is not good. Right. This is not a very good song. <laughs> oh, oh and they don't like this. <laughs> like, tell you everything you need to know. You go, they don't like this either. Oh, no. Like, and then you play all of these songs, and none of them are good enough to, like, commit to doing it, or, uh, to commit to recording it. Um, and then we went back to the drum. We literally threw all of that out and started all over again. And uh, one of the first songs that Aaron brought in was this song called Dangerous. And it, 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 spoke to what we were trying to do with the record like the initial concept was that the record was supposed to have been like the soundtrack to um a perfect night out in the city you know where all of your friends just kind of come together right. and everyone's mood is right and you're going to the you know you, you have a great dinner you're going to the club after that where, mm -hmm. and everything just falls into place and it's a night that you never want to end but you know inevitably it will and so we wanted something that you could play track one all the way through track nine or ten and then you'd be like that's that reminds me of like a really great night out in the city um and so th with that directive in mind we knew that all the songs were supposed to fit into that uh vibe mm -hmm. um and so dangerous was the first one that came through that we were like this might really be this might be the best way to kind of introduce that as an idea so we tried to stick we tried to stick true to that vibe and i think we've gotten pretty close so yeah, yeah. A couple of things you said that was just somewhat intriguing to me that um, you guys actually had built up a following without having released any original content. Yeah. That, yeah. That's yeah. amazing to me that. <laughs> and so when you release Dangerous and your upcoming EP, you already have. Um, so you guys hit the ground running. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised more people don't do that. Um, yeah, man. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's an interesting thing. I, I think. Um, the, the toughest thing about it is, um, you know, is like getting away from it, honestly, you know, like, because we were in it for so long and I imagine anybody else who does it, you know, it's great to, to sing other people's music. It's awesome. We love these legends and it's some of our favorite songs to sing still. Um, but, you know, I, I feel as though at a certain point, you got to start crafting your own identity based off of your own thoughts and ideas. And we all felt that way. Um, yeah. So as much as the uh, the covers and specifically the Michael Jackson albums like really fed us and really got us a lot of notoriety, um, we all felt that very same feeling of like, okay, this was great, and I'm glad people enjoy it. But yeah. like we, you know, we want we wanted more as artists. So yeah, it, I mean, it took we were all on sort of different timelines with that. I think Aaron and I got there a little yeah. bit quicker, and then we we just kind of waited until everybody felt that same level of like. I don't really want to sing that anymore. You know, like there's <laughs> like, even though you love the song, it's like, how many more times can I do this and still right. do it with the same enthusiasm as I did a few years ago. Um, yeah. And when that happened, that was when it was really easy to just kind of pump the brakes on everything and say, okay, let's put covers down for a while and then just roll the dice with this original stuff and see if we can inject this same enthusiasm into the originals. And yeah. hopefully our audience is going to come along with us to the next phase of things and if they don't that's you know that's okay too 
Um, we understand. <laughs> um, but there was something about the the safety of hiding behind like these titans right. that yeah. made these you know masterpiece recordings. There's a there's a real level of protection when you're like, well, we're singing superstition, so how wrong can this go? Like it's not going to go that wrong, right? Because all the hard work was done by Stevie. So right. um, when you're putting all of that down, now you're you feel really really vulnerable, and it's like, oh, if they don't like this song, they're telling us they don't like us in a way. <laughs> <laughs> that's it's a vulnerable position to put yourself in after having felt so guarded for so long. But um, there, as Aaron is mentioning, there's a there was a time for us when we were like, we want to now take the training wheels off and just, you know, do this, do this for real. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, let me back up a little bit. How long have you guys been a group? Uh, we've been together for since 2010. The group has actually existed a little bit longer than that, but this group has been together for, for just about 10 years. Mm, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, well, let me ask you, um, since you guys were together and this is your, your coming out, song i guess yeah um yeah. why um why 10 years i mean why i mean i understand getting together in 2010 yeah mm -hmm. um but why why not why 10 years later you guys decided to to do your own stuff well it, it was actually the idea was that we were going to do this in year two maybe you know, yeah. um, we had that my, that MJ project and we had some songs that were lined up kind of ready to go in the studio. And then things like clicked for us faster than we were ready for it. And we were doing things that um, like we just couldn't say no to. We were doing like the Sundance Film Festival um, and performing for the um, for the UN Ambassadors Ball. And then mm. um, we were getting um, offers to go on TV shows and, do and you know, go go do this um, amazing event in Amsterdam. And like all these things that like the young version of yourself, you're like, I can't say no to that. That sounds right. amazing. I want, that sounds <laughs> really great. And so um, that took us away from the initial trajectory of what we were trying to do. And that phase lasted for years where we were still working and doing, you know, getting opportunities that we didn't think were gonna come that quickly. And so, um, you know, and then along the way, we were amassing an audience. And so, you know, the the instinct was to to try to grow in that space um, and see how long we can make that last. But um, all in all, all along, I think we, we realized that there was there was going to be a limit to what you could actually do yeah. um, when you were only doing other people's music. And so occasionally we would sneak in uh, an original tune and we'd do it in like the holiday season. Aaron wrote this really great song um, called the Thanksgiving song, which we, we did um, a video for um, right around Thanksgiving a few years back. And it's, it's really great. Um, he, then he also wrote another Christmas song, which I also really loved as well. But, you know, we were, we were only kind of putting one toe into the water with these yeah. songs. Um, but I, you know, we wet our appetite a little bit and we, we started to get, you know, um, a feel for what kind of music we might be able to do. And there was a lot of freedom in doing these songs that were written by us instead of saying, okay, well, we can't deviate too far from this beat and we can't choose a key that's too wild from the original key. Um, and well, the melody goes like this, so we can't really stray. We can't really change the words. You know, you're going to kind of upset the people that, um, that are there for like a, you know, a, a, a pretty accurate cover mm -hmm. and so um uh yeah it, it just it just took us a long time to to get to that point really i mean that was kind of where we always wanted to go but we just needed to get there when we got there and we were lucky enough to to um last this long and get to that <laughs> point um and still like each other <laughs> yeah you know? that's uh, to, to want to do it i think we just for me it's like oh we just got lucky that we we're able to stay together this long to be able to, yeah. you know. Yeah, I don't, forward. I don't, I know you said you guys do covers, but the success you guys had, I don't even know if cover is the right word because mm. you guys, man, you guys were killing it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> man. Um, Thank you. That's very kind. <laughs> go around the world. I mean, that, I think covers, I think we have to come up with a new term besides, uh, Cover group. <laughs> yeah. Covers are not easy to do. Yeah. It, it wasn't just a straight cover. 
because we were doing, you know, like these, you know, perfectly produced Michael Jackson songs with just our six voices. And we knew we had to replicate that live on stage. Yeah. Because if people were going to come to see us, if they'd seen our video and they were going to come to see us, they wanted to know that we were going to be able to do the exact same thing that we did right. in the video. And so we we had to limit ourselves to just the, the sounds that six individuals can make into six individual microphones. And so that limitation means that you're going to have to um, do fairly difficult vocal gymnastics to pull it off and make it entertaining. And um, so... That was uh that was um, harder than it looked um, yeah. from a distance. You know, oh, it, it took a lot of skill to 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 maneuver our way around it. But it was really fun. It was really yeah. fun. Hey, quick question: um, Have you guys ever heard from some of the artists where uh, that the covers that you guys do? So yeah, a we've heard from times. a few, right? Hmm? Uh, we've heard from a few. Um, yeah. Bruce Swedeen, the mixer for one of Michael Jackson's longtime mixers, he mixed yeah. Thriller. And, Thriller, I think. Yeah, he mixed Thriller and Bad, I think. Yeah. He, um, he he posted our video a few times and said some really complimentary things. That one was a, that was a big deal. That's he, right when the engineer um, of the the legend Michael Jackson yeah, that really says, cool. "This is pretty dope." You go, "Oh my goodness! Oh, thank you." <laughs> yeah. I think um, we're done. Good like, night. He was pointing out very specific reasons why he liked it. And we were like, oh, yeah, that's why we liked it, too. And so it was like <laughs> a nice validation to to have a very specific thing pointed out. Um, I think Pharrell liked one of our, I, yeah, like our version of Happy. Yeah. That, that was, I think that was cool. Who else? Um, um, we didn't cover their music, but we got a lot. We got a lot of love. For, we got some shout outs from like Jermaine Dupri, uh, Chris oh, yeah. Brown. Um, trying to think of other people, uh, back in, uh, well, uh, at the, I, th I think like almost the height of his popularity, popularity, Perez still, uh, posted one of our videos mm -hmm. and that kind of started, mm -hmm. um, a lot of the attention that we did not expect. Um, <laughs> we, we kind of expected our, our friends and family to be, watch our videos and go, Oh, this is fantastic. Um, and 10 million views later, you know, like we've, we've done a lot more than, than we thought we would, which we're super thankful for. But um, yes, but since that time, like in that 10 year period, uh, like acapella has been more mainstream than it ever has been, right? You know what I mean? There's movies, there's groups, there's pentatonics, you know, mm -hmm. um, Naturally Seven was on tour with Michael Buble. Um, right, they were kind know. of the first group to kind of bust out and bust through and, and, yeah. and do really cool things. Yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, in that kind of, uh, for lack of a better way to put it, it almost like legitimized acapella for 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 a lot of people and made it, made them take a take a different look to it because a lot of people right. still hear acapella and they think, oh, you mean like like a barbershop quartet? And we're like, no, absolutely not. That is <laughs> that is wrong. Right. That is it wrong. still exists even to this day. It still exists. Right. Barber, barbershop quartet is barbershop <laughs> quartet. That's what barbershop yeah. quartet. Is. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, so again, yeah, they hear acapella and then they hear our music and they're like, "Wait a minute, this doesn't make yeah. sense." It's so that up. Yeah. we're still kind of fighting that battle of like uh, a, yeah. a very uphill battle of um, like what is acapella, right? Because because yeah. a lot of people, you know, still don't understand, but we're up for the task. Right. Question for you: Now that you guys are starting to do your own stuff, are you guys going to still do covers or? Is that are you guys trying to put that behind you and just do? It's a great question. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we're ever going to really stop doing covers. Um, we're just going to um, do it'll it'll kind of come in between originals, or maybe even like several originals and then another cover. But yeah, we won't stop doing it. Um, but we're going to be a lot more selective over the ones the songs that we do choose to cover. Mm -hmm. um, like like some of the. The song at the end, I would say that we were kind of having trouble deciding which songs we wanted to cover because yeah. it's not as easy to do anymore. Like to figure out like one that we all six could say, yeah, I want to do that song. Um, that was getting that was becoming progressively more difficult, which I think was also like a sign that maybe we needed to start thinking about doing our own music. Yeah. Um, but covers is not something that I think we'll ever stop doing. Um, but we're not yet sure when the next one is coming. But okay. um yeah, it is. We'll we'll definitely do more. All right. Are you guys um are you guys signed to a label or are you guys strictly independent or we're in, yeah, no, we're we're independent. Strictly independent. To a label. That independent life. Yeah. Got it, got it. <laughs> yeah. Um 
Yeah. Yeah, man. I, I think you guys ought to. Well, let me ask you this. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just singing you guys' praises. I know you guys don't like that. Um, I know. We, pre we appreciate it, man. <laughs> we appreciate the love. Thank you so much. What kind of advice would you give? Because um, I know when I was a kid, you mentioned Michael Jackson. Well, you know, we were like Jackson 5 fans. And mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. every boy who lived in my neighborhood, we all got together and formed a group. And <laughs> we just wanted to look like a group. None of us could sing. Hey, that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> we, we were there too. <laughs> what kind of advice would you give um, people who are thinking about, you know, I want to do music, but I, I like kind of the acapella thing. What kind of mm -hmm. advice would you give them? I think um, my advice would be, oh, you got it. Nah, nope, nah. you go first. Yours is going to be better than mine, so you should go first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I'll, I'll go after you. You go first. You go first. <laughs> um, I think my advice would be, um, look, man, like I, I tell people like I came, I came from a neighborhood that was like, you know, tougher than most, however you want to put it. Like it wasn't like super favorable and, you know, singing was not the most popular thing to do. Um, you know, um, but the thing that I, and I, you know, I, I feel like I got a lot of flack for it, but the thing that I always remembered in doing it is and realizing that it was something that I wanted to do for the rest of my life is that doing anything else was not going to fulfill me nearly as much as music was going to fulfill me specifically doing music in this format where it's direct from me to you you know from one person to another person there are no filters maybe a microphone but there are no instruments that you have to dissect it is from me to you um so I think my advice would be like kind of kind of what you hear on a regular basis. There's going to be a lot of people who say a lot of different things. There are friends and family who are going to tell you you need to quit and get a real job and all that other stuff. Uh, and the thing that I just kept in mind is, is like it wasn't going to fulfill me as nearly as much as getting a nine to five. And frankly, look, I've had nine to fives too, but um, yeah, this is the most fun for 10 years that I've ever had. <laughs> Uh, and it mm -hmm. continues to still be the most fun. So I would say people want to talk, people want to do their do their thing and say stuff. Stick to it. Yeah. Stick to it. Absolutely stick Persistence to it. Persistence is is probably the most important ingredient to to all of it. Yeah. Because there are days when you're just not gonna wanna, you know, get up and write. You're not gonna wanna get up and go to the studio. Yeah. Um, but you have you just have to do it because not doing it is not an option. Um, and if you're young, I would say like one of the things that was most beneficial for me from a, on a technical side is to get like a, well, I mean, we all have iPhones now that have good recording capabilities where you can immediately play back and listen to yourself and just do that and really be honest. Like, is, you know, like grade yourself, be your own critic. Don't beat yourself up over it, but be your own critics so that you can be really self-aware and, mm -hmm. and figure out like, okay, so what can I do better? And then just try and go do that. Um, and then when you put together a group, I tell this to anyone that is trying to, starting to put together a group, two things. One, find people that you're cool with being in a 15 passenger van driving through Pennsylvania at three in the morning. <laughs> like you want to have people that you really want to be in that van with so or perfect. that you're not going to want to kill in that van. And that's, so that's really important. It's so underrated how important that is. Yeah. Um, and on a musical side, get as many musicians as you can, not just singers. If you're going to do this, like find musicians, like everyone in this group is a musician and a really good one at that. Um, and uh, it's those two ingredients make it never ending amounts of fun. Like we'll go if wherever we go, wherever we travel to, the six of us move as a pack. Like we'll yeah. eat all of our meals together. We will go to, you know, out walking around whatever city we're visiting and we'll do it all together. Just, um, finding good people and finding good musicians. You got those yeah. two things, you, you can you can do a lot of damage. Okay. The, the only other thing I'll add to that is, um, uh, because I realized that as, as, as we were um, uh, talking and I was listening to Ed, I realized that I've had a lot of different conversations, specifically lately around like one key thing and that's to constantly keep saying yes. I would always tell anybody younger than me or anybody for that matter is to keep saying yes. Keep saying yes to things. Keep saying yes to things that are in the same lane or in the same vein. Keep saying yes when your friends who were next to you when you started, stop saying yes. Keep saying yes. Keep saying yes when 
when it, it's the hardest to say yes. That's what I would tell people is like, anybody who is where you want to be, they kept saying yes, 100%. So just keep saying yes. Wow. I like that. Um, well, let me ask you a question. Uh, <laughs> you said you guys are all uh, musicians. Um, do you ever foresee a time where you might do a, a song or an EP with instruments? Or is this strictly acapella um, going forward? Um, I would say we're, as a, as an identity, as a group, we're probably always going to stick to being primarily a vocal group. Um, but I mean, with that being said, one of our favorite shows that we've done was at a club in the city called Rockwood Music Hall. Um, and um, it, mm. our, our bass singer couldn't make it. And we flew in um, a really great bassist from Chicago that we met while we were in uh, overseas in Asia. And he played the entire set with us on his electric bass. Yeah. And it was just awesome. Yeah, it was that was really awesome. awesome. <laughs> and uh, we've been trying to find ways to work with him ever since. And I think so in that vein, you know, we're we're interested in working with um, instrumentals. Oh, and, you know, we've actually had some of some really great instrumentalists remix or add themselves on to some of our tracks. Like we've mm -hmm. had drummers play on our stuff. We've had um, some DJs remix um, our stuff with like mashed in with like instrumental versions of the songs that we do um and it's just such cool stuff and if we yeah. were to be able to collaborate with them um in, in live performances or on additional recordings we would say yes in a heartbeat absolutely um but i think what makes us us is is the fact that we um we are an, a, a vocal group we're an acapella group and um uh yeah we i we'll, we'll probably end up staying in this lane but always venturing off and taking an exit here and there to you know see what's out there yeah okay uh, I gotta say this. Um, you guys really worked at social media, man. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we tried. We took a long hiatus. You guys should write a book on how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we're working on it. We're working on it. <laughs> this is the game plan right here. Um, yeah. yeah. Question for you now. We mentioned uh, Dangerous and mm -hmm. a new um, EP or album dropping. 2021 do we have a date for that yet or still kind of playing it by ear or still playing uh, it by ear we're looking at uh potentially february is uh kind of like a working date at this point um yeah we're we're, we're still we're still like figuring out a few things here and there and, and uh you know like any 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 artist we're you know we're trying to just do our homework we're trying to get, make sure we have all of our ducks in a row uh before we we let this thing loose but <laughs> that's the working date yeah uh, at, at this point yeah. uh, Early 2021 is where we're we're most likely gonna be releasing it yeah we probably won't be straying far from that all right is um is covid playing a part in the release as well i think we still might be on oh yeah down for sure next year. yeah sure. you're right that's yeah we're and to your point it's probably going to be a factor for the foreseeable future you know we have yeah. to kind of incorporate that as as is anybody else with right. any single one of our our plans here and now, yeah. um, so it's definitely part of uh, the process. Usually, you know, if we can all be together, that is the most likely thing, or or the easiest thing for all of us to kind of get right and get recording. But as we know, life is what it is, so we're trying to circumvent it as best as we can. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I gotta yeah. ask, and I understand um, if you don't want to answer is there i love it i love it already <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on <laughs> yeah, wait, wait, wait a minute now, now. <laughs> uh, you guys have a title for the uh album yet i told you hold on man <laughs> yeah. all right this has been great man thank you so no, much <laughs> uh, uh we do i we we've gone through working titles for the record for a while yeah um but as for a definitive one, there's one that we're probably aiming for, but even that's that's kind of TBD. We, but although we 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 are aware that we're we're ha we're gonna have to choose pretty quick, pretty uh, soon, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, Nothing. I, there's not gonna be anything crazy though. It's gonna be we're gonna try to keep yeah. it as simple as possible. <laughs> the I, 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 in the back of the room I, with I, water in it. Okay. that's the title. There it is, though. Yeah, I didn't expect to get an answer. I just thought I 
<laughs> nah, I appreciate you asking. Right. <laughs> now we're well, thinking about it more. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. That's true. What um, why don't you guys plug your um your social media um, um sites and where people can reach out to you? Yeah. Um, definitely. Yeah. We're, we're on all the major platforms, all the, the, the apps on your phone. We're on Facebook. You can get, find us on Facebook, uh, backslash the Wednesday music, facebook.com backslash the Wednesday music. Um, we are on Instagram as well. Instagram.com backslash the Wednesday music. Um, we are also on Twitter, uh, the same as well, which is twitter.com backslash the Wednesday music. Uh, so all the Wednesday music. I think that one's just, so if you actually, if you go to our website, just the some of them are a little bit different than all the links to all those different socials are on our website. Yeah. And so that's what I, said. I was saying, yeah, we saying the same thing. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Two more questions and I, I promise to get you guys out of here. No, no problem. Please. It's all good, man. Um, the name, mm -hmm. what does the name mean? explain the name? Duende. <laughs> yeah. So Duende is um, it's, a, it's a Spanish word without the W in it. And it's um, it, it speaks to the um, the heightened emotion that you feel when you're watching a performance, you know, like whatever makes you smile, whatever makes you cry, whatever makes you get, you know, get goosebumps. That that feeling comes from Duende. And um, so we really liked that that meaning. Like, ultimately, we hope that if not our audience feeling that like we hope to feel that for amongst uh, each other while we're while we're making music and but that that meaning is where we um took is why we took that as a name um so yeah, yeah. And, and with with the w in place in in, in the in tagalog in the filipino language it means another thing right that's so, so funny we were like, yeah so after we were like oh okay but you know we kind of already became known for what you know yeah, that, that name stuck. And so we're like, that's ah, all right. We'll write it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have so many people that come up to us and like, do you know what Duende means? And we're yeah. like, yeah, we all of our Filipino aware. fans. And they'll say, like, you know what that means in our language? And we're like, mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Yeah. I we thought we it didn't was, mean that one. I thought it was an African name. I said, oh, OK, Duende. Sound like. <laughs> yeah. Healing. Yeah. When I first heard it myself, actually, I thought it was yeah. African as well. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Well, one final question here. And I'm a. Yeah. Let it go. Um, now you just released Dangerous, mm -hmm. um, new uh, album coming um, early, maybe to early 2021. We'll say. Mm -hmm. Are you guys going to release any more singles before the mm -hmm. year is out? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, that is the um, yeah. We definitely got uh, at least three, maybe four more singles uh, before the album comes out. Um, but we. Uh, that's the kind of purpose of like what where I, where I kind of wrote dangerous because I wanted it to be introductory, you know. So if you like dangerous, you should really stay tuned. And I don't say this lightly for what's coming down the pipeline. I I, I you know I, I will speak for Ed and say that we are beyond excited to show you what we got coming up in the pipeline. If you yeah. didn't think this, if if you thought there were instruments in this, you're about to be blown away about what what we're coming down <laughs> the pipeline. Uh, we, we got a lot of hip hop coming through as well so uh mm -hmm. we're so so excited to share yeah okay. dangerous for us was kind of like the perfect song to just like intro reintroduce ourselves and yeah. and uh introduce the style of music that we're gonna be um that we're gonna be doing from here on out um but it's it's definitely the most uh such a, not the right word but like the most gentle version <laughs> of that would you say that like you know um, like, yeah yeah. I don't like saying that because I think it's a cool and edgy song, but it's also not quite as edgy as maybe some of the other ones that we have coming right behind it. Right, right. Um, this is definitely like a, like a, yeah, it's like a litmus test almost to see kind of like where, yeah. where, where, where if, if our people are stay there, we were kind of radio silent for a little bit and uh, this could kind of throw, you know, we, we did a complete rebrand as well. You know, right. if you look at any right. of our stuff before, it's completely different. So this was definitely just to test the waters. But Whew. when I tell you we about to, we about to come through with some fire, boy, <laughs> we about to come through. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, fellas, I appreciate you joining the show today. That's yeah, man. Young. Thank you so much for having us. It was a lot of fun. And a, Absolutely. Uh, J. Aaron Boykin. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very, very much. Maybe the next time we can get the whole band here. Yeah, yeah that'd be, be nice. Yeah, that'd be great. Good luck with everything, man, and uh, keep us posted. Thank you so much. Um, you can actually check out their uh, video on our website right now, bringbacksellmusic.com. 
uh, and then look out for their upcoming EP 2021 or album mm-hmm. 2021 and uh, follow them on social media because clearly they they got the recipe for social media. <laughs> we be trying, we be trying. If, if, and if you guys are in the mood for any of the, the covers that we mentioned, we got about 50 plus covers on our YouTube channel. So please check that out, uh, youtube.com backslash Duende Music. Um, get your fill. Todd, appreciate you having us, man. Thank hey, you so much. awesome. I really appreciate the time. Thank you for joining in. I appreciate it. I enjoy the conversation. Thank you for being so open and honest with uh, with everything. I appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah, my Our pleasure. pleasure. Thank Our you. My pleasure. All right. That's Edward and Jay Aaron from Duende, and we'll be right back. Thank you. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank Edward and Jay Aaron from Duende for joining us today. You can check them out on their social media sites as well as on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. That's our show for today. I'm Todd Woodson. See you next week.